All right, what up, y'all? All right, now it's time to plumb this thing up, and uh, I got some tips for y'all when sealing up these air compressors because, you know, there's so many different spots where they can leak from. You want to make sure every single joint is really, you know, uh, airtight because there's so many leak spots like that, that, where it comes out on the side, on the pump, everywhere. So... All right, so everybody's got their, you know, tried and true way of doing things, especially when it comes to, you know, plumbing, electrical, all that kind of stuff. They have preferences. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to seal this thing up with Teflon tape, and this is the high-density stuff, the gas yellow stuff, and pipe dope. First, I'm going to put the tape, then I'm going to put the pipe dope. And I know some people are going to say, oh, just use pipe dope. Oh, just use Teflon tape. Oh, don't use either, you know, silicone it. Do something stupid. I don't care what y'all say. I've done this before, and this works for me. Do what y'all want to do, but I do it this way. I mean, this isn't Teflon pipe dope. I never, I normally use the white Teflon pipe dope stuff, but this is yellow, and I used it, and people said it's good. So, yellow and yellow, and it comes out yellow, so... Um, I've used just Teflon tape before, and it leaks. I like both of them. I hadn't had any problems with both of them, so we're going to seal it up with both of them. Alright, so this stuff is extra thick. It's not like the white stuff. It's like, you can see, it's pretty thick. So, you go counterclockwise, and I'm going to do like two wraps, and then I'm going to pipe dope it. People are going to say... Oh, no, go four wraps. Go three wraps. Oh, dude, only do one wrap. Like, dude, do whatever you want to do. I don't care. As long as it works, it works, right? One. Let's see, you pull it this way. Two. All right, and then what I like to do is do like that and mush it down into the threads. Okay, and then I'm going to put some pipe dope on here, and then I'm going to crank it down. It's not rocket science, I mean, but I just wanted to show y'all, you know, my progress on this thing. It's now time to seal it up. I'm getting pretty excited because that means it's almost time to be able to use it. So don't get this stuff on your clothes. I've heard it never come out. wear gloves or something but cool kids don't wear gloves so now you don't go don't go crazy with this stuff and don't get it in the um the hole because you don't want to gunk up and gum up stuff i just put a little bit on there you know just to help a little bit give me a little bit extra better seal but i'm gonna put me a little bit of pipe dope on here and I'm just going to screw it in. Alright, so now we're just going to screw this thing in here. Alright, so I don't know exactly where I want it right now because when I put my pressure relief valve and my pressure switch and stuff on there, um, I don't know which way I want it to blow off and how it's going to go, so I'm going to leave it like that for now. But I got it tight as you can see. Now we're going to put this pressure switch on here. So now we got this little piece, this little nipple. Oh, that's another tip too. These things are expensive as hell by themselves. If you go to the air compressor section, you can get a two-pack of Husky ones for like a dollar ninety. Um, they're like three bucks a piece. But if you go to Harbor Freight, I think they're like ninety-nine cents, something like that too. So that's a good tip. Counterclockwise. 
and you never put the Teflon tape anywhere where it can get in the opening. You don't want it in the opening. I'm no plumber by any means, like I'm no painter by any means, but I mean this stuff isn't rocket science. Not to talk shit on any plumbers or anything like that. Now remember, these threads are metal, right? So the metal on metal is what seals. You get them tight. You seal them up by getting them tight. Um, you know, people say pipe dope works the best because it lubricates the threads and allows you to get them even tighter. Yeah, there's some truth to that. There's always going to be a gap in between the uh, threads as they mesh. As the in the joint as they mesh, there's always going to be a bit of a gap, right? So you need something to fill in the gap as well as lubricate the threads. It does a lot of things, and you don't need to go overboard. You just need to get it just right, obviously. So I probably went a little overboard on that. Maybe not. All right, we're gonna screw it in. All right, doped up. Get me a little wrench. Okay, I don't dare go any tighter. That's on there. Now we're gonna get our pressure switch. Now we got our pressure switch here, and I'm going to do the same thing, but I don't want a lot of crap up in there where the little hole is, so we're going to have to be careful, but this goes right here like that. Try not to scratch. Come on, go on. Oh, bastard. It's worth mentioning that I'm gonna redo this conduit anyway, so. Get it as tight as you can. I mean, don't snap them off. They're just brass, obviously. But you'll know if it's loose because it'll start leaking. And if it starts leaking, that means you need to tighten it up some more. So, pressure switch is in there. It's upside down. It's driving me insane. But that's the way they did it with the uh, contactor. It goes right here. So, I guess that's the way it's just going to stay. I might get a little plug and plug that and flip it around. I don't know. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do, because that's retarded. But, uh... Alright, so... I got this thing all sealed up, you know, just right here. Um, I'm going to give you all a rundown of my, uh, my setup where I'm going to do it everywhere else, but I'm not going to bore you all with that. But uh, right here, we're going to put this piece because I'm going to neck it up to three quarters where it goes into my regulator. So we're going to have to Teflon this up. Screw that down. 
Teflon that up. Um, let's see. Then we're going to have this. Come out of there. And uh, I might have to get a 90. I don't really want to, but I don't want to mess with the flow too much. So I'm probably going to have to get a 90 to keep the, the pipes in more because I'm going to put a hydraulic hose right here. And the bin radius on that is going to be like, you know, like that. So I'm probably going to have to get a 90 to get a thing going straight up. We'll see. It's going to have to go straight up and then bend to my regulator. We'll get into that later. But, um, okay, so then there's this right here. That's my little auto drain thing. I'm going to Teflon that up. And then right here, I already did that one. So I just wanted to show you all how I do it. But, uh, oh, yeah, and then the bottom drain. All right, so I'm going to show you all what I have for a bottom drain here. Here's my bottom drain with a little blow-off valve on it. And I was having a heck of a time finding the um, PSI rating for black iron pipe. So if y'all know, leave a comment in the description below, please. But uh, yeah, this is going to screw into the bottom like that. Well, here we go. It's going to screw in like that. And then this pipe right here is going to run out of the garage door so it's going to blast all the moisture out of the bottom and i'll show you all when it's all said and done but that's what it's going to be like so all right so here's the pressure relief valve right here you all know what they look like if you don't now you do so it's just a little brass piece and it blows off once it reaches a certain pressure it's a safety device so that you know if more air keeps getting pumped in there, something bad happens and it keeps running and running and running and running, the tank won't explode. So I got mine in the mail, like I said, but um, this one right here does 225 PSI when it opens. The one I got on order is 200 PSI. Um, and watch your threads. This is a quarter inch MPT thread. They make three eighths and half inch ones too. So make sure you get the right one. But uh, yeah, it's a really important safety device to have or else your tank would explode, obviously. So. All right, thanks for watching, y'all. That's just the way I do it. If y'all got a different technique, let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to check out the description while you're there because I'm going to put links to these adapters so that you know you can get them on Amazon. You don't have to build them yourself and pay three times as much at the hardware store. So check out links in the description. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more air compressor videos. Later.